Hello amigos, I wanted to make one other flat earth video. So the latest um, latest concept that I've heard about why the earth must be flat has to do with the upcoming solar eclipse on August 21st, 2017. Today is August, uh, let me see, August 12th, 2017, so a little of a week before that's going to happen. And um, this solar eclipse is supposed to cut straight across the United States, entering the states at uh, in Oregon and going all the way across and leaving the country in somewhere in South Carolina. Anyway, um, they're saying that the path of the eclipse, the shadow, will be about 70 miles wide. And the flat earthers that, I'm, that I've heard about are saying that, well, that proves the earth is flat because the um, basically what they're saying is the sun is here, it's a little point source of light, and the moon is here. And the Earth is there, and the sun, the sun rays are expanding, and so when it makes a shadow on the Earth, that the shadow has to be at least the size of the Moon and a little bit bigger because of the way that the rays expand out. Um, but actually, they have their analysis exactly 100% backwards, and this is kind of the problem I have with flat Earthers sometimes. I'll, I'll just say at the outset that. Some of the concepts that they come up with actually do make some sense and, and uh, you know, are, are kind of food for thought. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, they water it down with a lot of stuff like this, which is, which is just silly. Um, so the truth of the matter is, what's going on here is the sun is way bigger than the moon. The moon is teeny tiny compared to the sun. And instead of the light expanding like this it's actually coming from from the sun and contracting as it as it comes down towards the earth so when we see on this diagram here this is the um a little graphic of what's going on i've got these numbers from google here so the the radius of the sun is a little under 700,000 kilometers versus a moon of 1737 kilometers so like i said the moon is teeny tiny puny compared to the compared to the sun, according to the globe earth theory, at least, okay? And um, you can look at the distance, um, the, the distance of the sun from the earth, about 150 million kilometers versus the distance of the, the moon to the earth. I have uh, two values here, actually. Um, there's a reason for that. Orbiting celestial bodies do not have circular orbits. They have oval orbits. And in this case, the perigree is the point at which the moon is the closest to the Earth in its orbit, and the apogee is the point at which the moon is farthest from the Earth in the orbit. And that makes a difference for this analysis. I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later. But for the purposes of the initial analysis, I've assumed that the moon is at the perigree position. And based on this diagram, we can make a triangle and determine what the slope is of the light rays coming from the edges of the, of the sun across the edges of, of the moon and uh, determine from that how big the shadow is going to be when it crosses the earth. So if we look at this the next picture here, this kind of shows it graphically. So the slope of the rays is based on the difference in the radius between the sun and the moon versus the distance between the two. And when we do those calculations, we have a slope value here that we calculate of 4.64 times 10 to the minus third kilometer per kilometer. Um, this is a very, very basic, simple calculation to do. And um, you know, any flat earther or anybody who's trying to say that this is not correct can do this calculation for themselves. It's very easy. And then, based on uh, the slope that we've calculated, then we can determine what the shadow length is going to be on the Earth. So in the next diagram, I've made another triangle here with the same slope. The bottom of the triangle is a blue horizontal line, and the blue vertical line here is going to be the size of the shadow on the, on the Earth. So, we use the same formula. The slope is the difference in radius versus the difference in distance. And um, plug in the numbers to calculate what the shadow radius is going to be. And that comes out to 
55.4 kilometers. Um, of course, the shadow is going to be twice that because it's a di diameter. So twice times 55.4 is 110.8 kilometers, which turns out to uh, works out to 68.8 miles. So that's about 70. So that's exactly what they're saying it's going to be. And according to um, according to the numbers on on uh, Wikipedia and according to the globe earth theory that the the 70 miles radius is actually correct and so any flat earther out there who's saying that this doesn't make any sense they could just they could do these basic simple calculations for themselves and determine that actually it does make sense um, but there's one other thing that I want to say about it also and if we look at this next diagram this is the perigree versus apogee, what I was talking about before. So what it's showing here is I've got the moon shown in two different positions. Uh, the moon on the right is in the perigree position closest to the earth and the moon on the left is of course same moon, different position, um, and the apogee position which shows that it's in the farthest position away from the earth. And so what you can see is that when you move the moon away from the earth, the shadow on the earth gets smaller and smaller until it actually eventually disappears and I found through calculations that the shadow does actually completely disappear before you even reach the halfway point between the perigree and the apogee. So um, I, you know, I'm sure this, the moon would still block out some of the sun's rays but the sun would not be completely blocked off in that case you would still be able to see the edges of it from anywhere on the planet. Okay, there's just one other point that I'd like to mention, and that is that not only does this 70 mile wide shadow not disprove the globe earth theory, but it presents a major challenge for the flat earth theory, because the flat earth theory says that the sun and the moon appear to be about the same size, because they actually are about the same size, and they're both about the same distance from the sun circulating around the earth, like so. Um, flat earth being here, circulating around this way. Um, now the problem with that is what the flat earthers say needs to happen for the globe earth theory to be true is actually what needs to happen for the flat earth theory to be true. Again, they have this completely backwards. So if the sun and the moon are both the same size and the moon is somehow or another able to get in front of the earth, I'm not exactly sure how that would even happen on a flat earth model, but if that were to happen, then it would have to block out, basically it would, it would, it would completely block out the rays of the sun, at least um, in accordance with the diameter of the moon, which is supposed to be the same diameter as the sun. So ba basically, we would need to have a shadow on the earth of some 2,000 miles or whatever the diameter of the moon is in a flat earth model for a solar eclipse. So. If I'm missing something, please let me know. Please drop me a comment below and tell me how you think that that might be the case. But it seems to me that not only does this 70 mile wide swath of shadow of a solar eclipse not disprove the globe earth theory, but it presents a major challenge to the flat earth theory. And I'd like to see how somebody might try to resolve that one. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye.